Okay, other uh, colours in, in foods. So the colours that we just talked about are all present naturally in the product, but other colours occur as we go to process foods. So for example, when we go to chop an apple, it goes brown. When you open up an avocado, if you had your banana in your school bag and it got a bit bruised, it goes brown. Okay, and what's happening there is also chemistry. It's phenolic substances in the plants get acted upon by an enzyme when there's oxygen there and these brown colors develop, okay? You may know that if you squeeze lemon juice on a banana, it doesn't go brown, and it's because as you lower the pH, the enzyme can't work. And this is a, a big issue for having chopped uh, fruit and vegetables in a nice state, is to try and stop this enzymatic reaction, because it does normally cause quite a negative effect with these brown pigments. Brown pigments that you probably like is caramel color, and that's coming from sugars interacting. So making uh, caramels is primarily sugar, sugar, with some fat interactions. So the brown colors you get is from sugars reacting. And those colors will be the basis of the dark brown color that you get in Coke, the colors that are present in things like whiskies, and some beers will also contain the, these brown colors. A second set of uh, browning is called Mailer browning. And Mailer browning gives you a brown color. So when you put your toast into the toaster, it's, as you put it in, it's white. And the color changes to brown once it's in the, in the toaster. When you roast the chicken in the oven, it goes from the white skin to the brown skin. But it's not only the color is changing in this case. In Mailer browning, you have amino acids and you have sugars reacting together, they not only give you a change in color, they also change the flavor. Okay, so if you've ever tasted um, the batter for cupcakes before you put it in the oven, it doesn't really taste very nice. But once you take it out of the oven, it has lovely taste and lovely texture, and the Miller browning is a big uh, part of that. Okay, so that's the sensory aspect. We've gone through the appearance, saying the aroma and the taste are also very important, and the texture. And when you talk about flavor, you're talking about more than one thing. You're talking about the taste on your tongue, you're talking about the smell, and you're talking about taste sensations. Okay, so in terms of the smell, the chemicals have to be able to travel through the air for you to smell them. And smell is a very big part of flavor. If you have a cold, then you normally can't taste products very well because taste is only a little bit of it. The, the aroma is more. And in terms of taste, we only have five basic tastes, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. And then taste sensations. We normally like mints because they cool your tongue. And that's due to the presence of menthol. menthol. And then other taste sensations are things like the pungent com compounds that are present in chili peppers. So I don't know if you've ever had chili peppers, but you need to be careful if you're going to taste them. But if you want to know what taste sensation is and what pungency is, you'll get them from the, the chili peppers. If you're going to taste them, just be careful that you don't rub your, your eyes or any of the sensitive skin around the, the eyes because it'll burn your eyes as well. And again, it's, it's the compounds in the chili peppers that are gonna, gonna make it burn. Okay, so as we're passing the chilies around, you're gonna feel the taste sensation. Another taste sensation you might be familiar with is if you eat a raw banana, a, a banana that's not ripe. Okay, the, your tongue often begins to pucker up. And that's due to the fact that, again, the chemical compounds present, present phenolics are interacting with the proteins in the saliva and it's depositing on your tongue. So again, it's not a very uh, nice sensation to have, and that's called astringency coming from the uh, bananas. So essentially, how we taste is via the taste buds on our tongue. Okay, we have a series of taste buds and the chemicals from the, the food, go into the taste cells, and then they register in the brain, and we register it as sweet, as sour, um, as salty. But 
just to, to show you that here you can see the, the taste buds are pink. We just put some blue dye on the tongue and the taste buds say pink. So they're the bits that detect the taste of food when you put it in your mouth. And we don't all taste the same way. Okay, I mentioned at the outset that your genes can affect how you taste products. And that's particularly true for bitter compounds. So some people can taste an awful lot of bitterness and they're called super tasters. And some people taste very little, they're non-tasters. Okay, so and it depends on your genetic makeup whether you taste or whether you don't taste. So what we have here are a series of discs, little white discs. And what we've put on these discs is a compound called propylthiouracil, or we call it PROP for short. So that is a compound that the super tasters is very bitter. And for those of you who can't taste, then you'll think that you just have a bit of paper in your mouth. Okay, in terms of the scale, it literally goes from people tasting nothing to people going up to a scale of zero to 100, they'll be up at 100. It's probably best if the people who've had the chilies don't try the bitter, because you probably won't be able to taste for a little while after the strength of the, the chilies. Okay, so just, just put the little disc on your tongue and see do you taste. Okay, so I think you've handed out the, the discs and even looking at the, the front row here, I think to the left hand side we certainly have a super taster. Uh, so this young man's face was wincing and turning when he put it into his mouth. And on the right hand side, sorry, what's your name? Anna. Shauna. Couldn't taste anything. She sat there quite merrily and couldn't taste a, a thing in it. So it's showing that so all of those discs are prepared in the same way. They all have the same bitter compounds on them. Some of us can taste them and some of us uh, can't. So for all foods, there are differences in how we all perceive taste, but in bitterness, it's uh, particularly evident. So in terms of the significance of that is the compound that you had on the, the disc is very similar to a compound that exists in a lot of the green vegetables, like broccoli, like cabbage. So there is a theory that if you're a super taster and very sensitive to that, then you may not be particularly that keen on those type of food products. We've just uh, recently finished a, a project with uh, school kids at UCD, um, taking um, primary school kids. We certainly didn't see that this effect, their intake of fruit and veg wasn't affected um, by whether they were super tasters or not. There were a lot of other factors. But it, it may be something that's influencing whether you like foods or whether you don't like foods as to how you can taste them. And also you can see today that some people are very, very sensitive and others can't taste it at all. Okay, so that's the look of the food, the smell of the food, the taste of the food. And just one last thing before we finish up is the, the texture of food. Okay, so we have some plates of chocolate here. <clears throat> and part of the reason why we like chocolate is that when you put chocolate into your mouth, it melts straight away. Okay, and a nice creamy sensation on the tongue. Okay, and in general, most people will like chocolate. It has fat, it has sugar, but the melting of the fat is very important. And if you can look at chocolate under a microscope, this is what you see. And the blue bit in the background there is actually the fat. So when you put a square chocolate on your tongue, the fat that's in it is cocoa butter and it melts straight away. At body temperature, it melts and it feels nice and creamy in the mouth. So the blue is the overall fat. And then the other little bits in it, you have your, the green sugar bits. So as the fat melts, it's releasing the sugar. We like the, the uh, sugary taste. You have the dark cocoa bits present in the chocolate as well. But in order to get the chocolate to melt like that in your mouth, when they're making chocolate in the factory, they have to do something with the chemistry. So just to explain that to you a little bit. So what you have 
in chocolate. The fat is called cocoa butter, okay? Coming from the cocoa bean, you press the fat out of it. And most of it is made up of the structure that's there on the left-hand side is called a triglyceride, okay? So it's an unusual fat in that the triglycerides are all very, very similar in cocoa butter. Three fatty acids, a palmitic, oleic, and stearic acid, making it a hard, white fat. But when you melt the cocoa butter and cool it, as it solidifies, the same as butter solidifies when, when you cool it and put it in the fridge if it's been melted, the cocoa butter melts into very different forms. And you've pictures of the very, just schematically representing the different type of crystals you get in the cocoa butter fat, depending on what temperature you melt it to. So some of them will melt at 17 degrees, a very low temperature, some at 23 degrees, and some up into the 30s. And what you don't want, if you pick up, if I pick up this piece of chocolate here, and if it has the crystals that melt at 17 degrees, then the heat from my body is going to melt it and I'll be covered in chocolate straight away, which isn't what you want. Okay, so you want the chocolate to melt in your mouth and not melt in your hand. And how they do that within the food industry is that they make sure that you only get the purple type of crystals that are there. Okay, the ones that melt at 33.8 degrees, so they melt in your mouth, but not anywhere else. So that's the, in terms of melting in your hand, it also affects the texture. So what we have for you to try here, and hopefully there's enough for all of you, you have squares of chocolate, okay? There's dark chocolate and there's milk chocolate. So just one second so that you know what you're tasting, okay? So the chocolate that has come from the shop in the squares has the right type of crystals in it. And you'll see it's shiny and it has the texture that you like and it'll melt very nicely. And then for the other bits, you can see they're uneven blocks of chocolate. They're off to the side here. And if you look at the, the surface of the chocolate, it's all white. Now it's perfectly safe to eat. The reason that it's white is because of the fact that the wrong cocoa butter crystals are in there. And the reason they're wrong is because when we melted the chocolate, Tara melted it and she just left it to set at normal temperature. And she didn't do what they would do in a chocolate factory, which is temper the chocolate to make sure you have the right crystal. So you get this nasty white appearance on the surface. And if you go to handle the chocolate that's been made like this, you'll see it has a very crumbly, soft texture. It doesn't break nicely like normal uh, chocolate does. Let's say over time you get that white appearance occurring on chocolate. So if you see that type of appearance on chocolate, often if you've left chocolate in the sun or if it's an older box of chocolates, it might melt and reform. It is actually perfectly safe to eat. There are no, no difficulties with it. Okay, so we'll pass around some chocolate. And let's say the message here is the texture is affected by chemistry. Okay, so just to, to summarize um, the main points of what we're talking about today, that essentially food is made of, of chemicals. Maybe not chemicals as you might normally interpret them, but fats, protein, carbohydrates, the colors that we saw today, they're all chemical structures. We process these chemicals within the food to make them safe, to give them nice taste, to give them nice colors, and that as we do that, Hopefully you'll have seen from today, you can change the color of foods, you can change the texture of foods, you can change the aroma of foods, and that all decides whether we choose to eat a food product or not. So hopefully you've got some idea of what the chemistry of food is about today, and if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take them. Thank you.